What's up everybody? It's your boy Squints here and today I am excited to chat a little bit about my Alpha 2 predictions and the February development update for Ashes of Creation which is a game that I kickstarted all the way back in 2017 and I am amped out of my mind to be able to actually play the game for the first time this year. So the February update may have been literally the final feature we needed to know going into Alpha 2. We have seen a ton of features over the last two years, especially the last year. We're going to go over some of those later to kind of piece together what features we may be missing and what we may see in the upcoming months from the development updates. But first off, let's talk about commissions. So commissions, they're your stereotypical MMO quest, which I was excited to learn about because I'm a big level enthusiast and quester in the MMOs that I play. So of course, I was excited to actually see what the questing experience in Ashes would be. So in order to start your commissions, you would end up going to the commission board, which looks kind of similar to the New World one with just a few added things. And commissions would grant your character XP, give you resources and rewards, and also grant the node that you completed them in XP, helping them level up. Now, as you look at the board, you may notice three distinct different colors. We have gray, green, and blue. The best way to look at these are these are just qualities of the commission, which will provide you with more or less XP and or rewards. And these will also cycle out every 30 minutes or more. They're on a timer, as you can notice here as well. One key thing to know here though, the quality of the commission is impacted by the current node state and the current node level. So as these nodes level up higher, you're going to have higher quality commissions available to you. But maybe if it's raining or it's snowing or a certain moral boss is active, that is also going to impact the commissions you have. One of the coolest things that they said about commissions though, is they can be turned in anywhere. You don't need to run back to the commission board. Once you complete them out in the world, you can turn them in and be rewarded. After accepting a commission, you can see that we have the objective tracker on the side of the map, pretty standard and stereotypical, but it looks a little new since the last time we may have seen it. And of course, thankfully, you can also see where you have to go to complete these commissions on the map. Now, when I first saw and heard all this, I was, I was a little sad, a little disappointed. I know we had the big story arc quests and missions that are gonna be available in the game, but in terms of like your stereotypical MMO quest, this was just kind of the fetch and go receive type of questing, which is fine. I do a ton of that. I play WoW. So obviously that is basically the entire game minus I have to return to the quest giver. Now they did end up showing us something though that got me very, very excited. And that is side quests. And they are giving me real Guild Wars 2 living world activities in a good way. Almost like it's living world 2.0 in my opinion. So side quests are going to depend on the current state of the world and the node that you are in. And they're going to be spread throughout the world. The coolest thing here is how this side quest just seamlessly appears as Steven is running through the world. That is pretty freaking sweet. Now the whole purpose of side quests is they're going to lead you on an adventure and they could turn into a chain quest and they're going to give you really awesome and epic rewards. But again, what side quests are available are going to vary from time to time depending on what's happening in the world. Once you interact with a side quest and end up accepting that quest, it is going to affect what Intrepid calls the activity map. The activity map is just an intertwined system that affects what you see in the world depending on on the player interaction in the current world state, which can spawn new events or new side quests throughout the zone. Now, it's basically a butterfly effect that if this happens, then that, if this, then this, if that, or this, and this, and that, and this, and woo, new things are gonna happen, basically. The activity map is a butterfly effect or a domino effect, depending on what actions the players decide to do within the node in the world, which are going to trigger new events, new quests, new story arcs, and new things for you to do as a player which is exciting. So these side quests are actually not just side quests, they're actually pretty impactful to your experience inside of Ashes of Creation. So an example quest that we ended up seeing, we had to go kill a Minotaur leader. But you'll notice when you're in the area that the Minotaur leader isn't there. So you might be asking yourself, where is he? How does he spawn? Well, that's where this activity map comes into play. You as the player end up having to provoke this leader from coming out and showing himself. So what they end up doing in the preview is they end up start slaying minotaurs, killing them, and eventually the boss ends up coming out and he spawns, which triggers a whole world event. And since this boss was storm themed, the weather actually changed into a rainy thunderstorm. Thunder lightning starts shooting out and damaging the mobs and players if you're hit by it. And this actually affected the entire zone, which actually 
actually also made a new side quest spawn due to the rain. So they end up killing this boss and turning in the side quest and getting their new side quest from the rain, which was all very cool. So you can see that why I think this gives living world vibes, but kind of 2.0. My experience in Guild Wars 2 was always running around, interacting, and if you talk to a certain NPC, something would just get triggered and then you would kind of start this little mission and it would kind of just always be there. It's never unique or different per server or shard or instance or whatever you were in. It was always pretty predetermined. Where literally in this scenario, you could be out just doing some commissions. Someone runs across the side quest NPC, accepts the quest, starts trying to provoke the Minotaurs to spawn the boss. Boss spawns, zone changes, you run across a new side quest and you're not even there. And that side quest may not be there tomorrow because it's not raining tomorrow in Vera. So that is super freaking cool. And that's where I kind of think this is Living Worlds 2.0. So if you're like a Guild Wars 2 fan and you enjoy that living changing world, Ashes is bringing that in a new way with the activity map and really expanding on that idea. And I'm really excited to get my hands on Alpha 2 and to really hunt for side quests and find every little side quest I can do because the rewards are very good from these side quests and just this experience. Like I don't know. It's, it's almost like running through a world of constant FOMO, which is exciting because it's going to make playing the game and sharing your stories with friends epic. Like it's going to make every little moment inside the game unforgettable. And that is really great. And one thing I did want to highlight is that combat still looks like it's improving. Visuals are improving. Effects are improving. And we're just continuing to head in the right direction. I don't think that this development update had a huge leap in terms of either of those things, but you can tell that it's getting polished a little bit more. It's getting more and more prepared for Alpha 2. Now, those are all the main highlights from this development update. But now I want to talk about when we could potentially be expecting Alpha 2, which I know I am not the only person excited about. So if you look at the development updates from the last year here, you can see that we have seen Gathering, the Seasons, we've seen class updates for the Cleric, Tank, Mage, and Ranger, we've seen Story Arc Questing, now we have seen Commissions along with Side Quests, we've seen World Events, we've also been able to see World Bosses, we've We've also been able to see freeholds, which is the player housing out in the world. We've seen nodes up to the village state. We've been able to see crafting inside the game, and we've also been able to see caravans and a couple updates, and they have come a long way. And intertwined between all of these little updates, we've seen plenty of PvP and combat updates as well. Now, Q3 is only four months away from starting, and if Ashes is going to have a Q3 release, it has a three-month window between July and the end of September. September to release its alpha 2. Now that we've talked about all the features that we've seen in the last year, there's really only a handful of features that are missing that we kind of need to see before heading into alpha 2. That's sieges, instance dungeons, and probably another few class updates. Also a larger node update if that is something they're planning on testing. That leaves us with four development updates that we're looking for, which would get us all the way to July. Now, I don't think it's very likely that we get alpha 2 in July, but I do think it's very likely that we get it mid to late August. And that is just based on the development updates we've seen for the last year, which have all been Alpha 2 centric. But hey, those are just my thoughts. I really do believe that we're going to see Alpha 2 either mid to late August. And if we're super lucky, hopefully maybe late July. And if you don't have access, don't worry, because I'm going to be reviewing every system, giving you every little detail, putting my hands on all the classes classes and all the things and giving my opinions on everything. So don't forget to punch that like button, kiss that subscribe button, and tickle the bell just so you can stay up to date with everything Ashes. And if you enjoy other MMOs such as World of Warcraft, or if you want to see and hear more about upcoming MMOs in the future, hey, I'm going to be covering those as well. But before we go, let me know in the comments below on what your thoughts are about this most recent development update. And let me know when you think the Ashes of Creation Alpha 2 will be dropping. And with that, I'll skirt my way out of here and I'll see y'all next time.